The Rukkund Lake, known as Skeleton Lake, is one of the world's most eerie archaeological enigmas, lying in remote Himalayan heights at 5,029 meters above sea level. In this secluded lake basin, hundreds of human skeletons are scattered in and around its shallow waters, presenting an unsettling sight that defies easy explanation. During certain times of the year when the snow melts, the bones become visible, some still remarkably intact, eerily frozen in time. Alongside these skeletal remains are fragments of weapons, jewelry, and even well-preserved leather shoes, hinting at the strange lives and tragic fates of those who met their end here. The spectacle is so mystifying that it has sparked countless legends making Rupkand Lake both a sacred and haunting destination for locals and travelers alike. The origins of these skeletal remains have long captivated scientists, local villagers, and religious pilgrims. One popular local legend speaks of a 9th century king and queen accompanied by a massive entourage, making an annual pilgrimage to the nearby sacred shrine of Nanda Devi, the powerful mountain goddess. According to the tale, a royal king of the region, Raja Yashdaval of Kanauj, decided to undertake a pilgrimage to honor the goddess Nanda Devi, but took it lightly, treating the sacred journey as an extravagant adventure. Accompanied by his wife, Rani Balampa, and a large entourage of dancers, musicians, and servants, the king is said to have disrespected the sacred nature of the journey by indulging in merrymaking and ignoring religious customs. Nanda Devi, angered by this disrespect, unleashed a storm of hail and icy winds upon the group, which ultimately led to their deaths. The skeletons at Rupkunt are thought to be those of the king and his entourage, frozen in time as a warning to future pilgrims about the perils of disrespecting the gods. Another legend associated with the Nanda Devi Rajjat pilgrimage suggests that the pilgrimage includes an element of sacrifice to appease the goddess. Some versions of the tale describe a divine dance or a dance of death wherein certain members of the pilgrimage party would enter a trance and perish in devotion. The remains at Rupkund in this context are thought to belong to pilgrims who sacrificed themselves for Nanda Devi's favor and protection, possibly doing harsh weather events that trapped them in the unforgiving landscape. In the folklore of the region, it is also said that Rukpund is watched over by yakshas, spiritual guardians or nature spirits, who inhabit high mountain areas and protect sacred spaces. According to local beliefs, these spirits do not tolerate outsiders, and they punish those who intrude or show disrespect in the vicinity of the lake. In this legend, the individuals who perished at Rupkund are thought to have been struck down by these spirits as a consequence of wandering into sacred territory uninvited. Another story linked to Rupkund involves the tragic fate of a pregnant queen who attempted to make the pilgrimage to Rupkund Lake despite being advised against it due to her condition. She is said to have died en route with her companions unable to save her or themselves due to the severe weather. Some locals believe her spirit still roams the lake area and they see her remains and those of her entourage among the skeletons by the lake. Some villagers claim that the deaths could be attributed to the mythical Himalayan Yeti, believed by some to inhabit the remote areas around Rupkund. Legends speak of the Yeti as a fearsome creature that protects sacred lands and attacks trespassers. In this version of events, the bones are thought to belong to unfortunate travelers who encountered the wrath of this mysterious creature. 
The Nanda Devaraj Jat pilgrimage is a spiritual tradition that takes place in the state of Uttarakhand, India, where Rupkund Lake is located. This pilgrimage, held once every 12 years, is dedicated to the goddess Nanda Devi, one of the most revered deities in the region. Nanda Devi is seen as a protector of the local people and their lands, embodying a divine connection to nature and the mountains that surround her. The pilgrimage is considered one of the most challenging and sacred in Hindu culture, involving a strenuous journey through high-altitude terrain that spans over 280 kilometers. The journey often involves communities from across Uttarakhand and neighboring regions. It is typically organized by the royal family of the local Chand dynasty, as per tradition, with thousands of pilgrims participating in a procession that moves through various villages, high-altitude meadows, and mountain passes. Pilgrims carry offerings and statues of the goddess and participate in rituals, dances and songs that have been passed down for centuries. The pilgrimage culminates at Homkund near Rupkund Lake, where offerings are made to the goddess before returning. Though the exact origins of the pilgrimage are unclear, Inscriptions in nearby temples suggest that its roots could extend back to between the 8th and 10th centuries. Some legends link the journey to the marriage of Nanda Devi, who is said to have traveled to her in-law's place in the mountains, accompanied by a massive entourage. The pilgrimage reenacts this journey, symbolizing a respectful farewell to the goddess who is believed to be visiting her maternal home in the Kuma'on region and then making a difficult journey back. For centuries, pilgrims have braved unpredictable weather, difficult mountain paths and the possibility of landslides or altitude sickness to honor the goddess. Many even believe that participation in this arduous journey will bring blessings and protection to their families and communities. This enduring ritual provides insight into the local people's deep connection to their cultural heritage, spirituality and the unforgiving mountain landscape. Each of these legends reflects the local people's reverence for the mountains, their awareness of the dangers in such high-altitude settings, and the enduring mystery of Rupkund Lake's skeletal remains. While science has provided some explanations, these legends remain a testament to the powerful cultural and spiritual connections the local communities have with the lake and the surrounding mountains. Some researchers argue that Rupkund Lake may have been a gathering site for various pilgrim groups from distant regions who all met the same deadly fate. Yet folklore is only one thread of the mystery. Some historians speculate that the remains might belong to a lost army. It has been suggested that a battalion from the 19th century failed to cross the mountains due to unforeseen natural disasters or, as some researchers claim, a fierce snowstorm that overwhelmed the soldiers, leaving them to perish without a trace of their identities. Another hypothesis posits that the skeletal remains might belong to a group of traders who braved these treacherous paths on their way to Tibet or Nepal, possibly caught off guard by a deadly avalanche or an unexpected storm. To make the mystery even more perplexing, some researchers have suggested an epidemic might be the culprit, hypothesizing that a contagious disease could have swept through a large group, causing sudden death high in the mountains. While plausible, this theory raises more questions than answers. Huh? What epidemic could reach such an isolated altitude? And why would it leave skeletons scattered and spread across the lake's shore rather than clustered together? As scientists continue their search for answers, Rupkund Lake 
remains an enigma suspended between history and myth. The site has become both a scientific puzzle and a haunting pilgrimage destination, where ancient secrets linger in the bones waiting to be deciphered. And so, the mystery endures, attracting curious adventurers and researchers from around the world, each hoping to uncover the truth behind the chilling story of Skeleton Lake. The analysis of the Rupkund skeletons using ancient DNA, isotope analysis, radiocarbon dating, and osteological studies reveals that the remains belong to three distinct genetic groups and were deposited in multiple events about 1,000 years apart. This contradicts previous theories that suggested a single catastrophic event caused their deaths. DNA was extracted from the long bones of 38 individuals along with stable isotope analysis of 45 individuals to help reconstruct their diet and radiocarbon dating was done for 37 individuals. The osteological analysis, conducted earlier but unpublished, showed that the individuals were healthy, with some evidence of unhealed compression fractures from a violent hailstorm. The physical traits of the skeletons showed a mix of robust and tall individuals, as well as more gracile ones, suggesting at least two distinct groups. The analyses found both 23 males and 15 females, which challenges the idea that they were part of a military expedition. No close relatives were found among the individuals, indicating that these were not family groups. Additionally, there was no evidence of bacterial infection, ruling out the theory of an epidemic as the cause of death though it's possible that pathogens were too scarce to detect. The genetic analysis of the 38 Rupkund individuals reveals three distinct groups, Rupkund A, Rupkund B, and Rupkund C. Rupkund A includes 23 individuals and shows genetic variations similar to present-day South Asians. Still, they do not form a tight cluster indicating they come from diverse ancestral groups. The Rupkun B includes 14 individuals and has genetic similarities to present-day West Eurasians from Europe, the Near East and Iran, suggesting they have West Eurasian ancestry. Rupkun C includes one individual who shows a genetic likeness to East Asians specifically between the Onga of the Andaman Islands and Han Chinese. Further analyses revealed that the Rupkund B group were similar to present-day people from mainland Greece and Crete, while Rupkund A and Rupkund C show a closer relationship with populations from Iran. The analysis of the Rupkund skeletons shows that they were deposited in multiple events, not all at once. Radiocarbon dating revealed that the skeletons of Rupkund A, deposited between the 7th and 10th century CE, and Rupkund B, deposited between the 17th and 20th century CE, are separated by about 1,000 years, proving that these groups died at different times. While individuals in Rupkund A have dates that do not overlap, the dates for Rupkund B and the single Rupkund C individual overlap, suggesting they perished in the same time frame. Dietary analysis further supports the presence of distinct groups. The Rupkund individuals show varying carbon and nitrogen isotope values, indicating different diets. Rupkund B and Rupkund C individuals consumed C3 plants like wheat and barley, while Rupkund A individuals had more varied diets, with some eating a mix of C3 plants and C4 plants like millet, or animals fed C4 plants. 
The dietary differences between Rupkund A and Rupkund B are statistically significant, supporting the idea of multiple distinct groups at Rupkund Lake. The genetic analysis of the Rupkund skeletons revealed that the Rupkund B subgroup shares genetic similarities with present-day populations from Crete. However, this does not mean the individuals directly originated from Crete. Instead, it suggests their ancestors, or possibly the individuals themselves, came from a region nearby. This finding supports the idea that the Rupkund B individuals have West Eurasian ancestry. On the other hand, the Rupkund A subgroup is more genetically diverse and its individuals cannot be grouped into a single homogeneous population. The analysis shows that these individuals are genetically related to a wide range of present-day South Asian populations, reflecting the heterogeneity seen in modern South Asia. This group does not form a distinct genetic clade and shows significant variation in their genetic makeup. The single individual in the Rupkund C group exhibits Southeast Asian ancestry with approximately 82% of their genetic heritage related to Malay populations and 18% related to Vietnamese populations. This indicates that this individual likely had Southeast Asian origins. Additionally, when comparing the Rupkund groups to populations from the Himalayan region, including new data from northern Ladakh, no direct genetic links were found. Lastly, within the Rupkund A group, a weak but significant difference was observed between males and females in their West Eurasian ancestry, with males having lower proportions of this ancestry. This suggests that males and females in this group might have originated from different genetic mixtures within South Asia. The findings from Rukkund Lake have intrigued scientists due to the large number of skeletons found there, which have turned out to be both genetically and historically diverse. Using radiocarbon dating, scientists discovered that these remains are from at least two separate periods of death, with approximately a thousand years between them. This alone was surprising, given that the skeletons were initially thought to belong to a single group who had died in a single catastrophic event. The scientific evidence, however, paints a more complex picture. First, there is a group labelled Rupkund A who seems to have died over several centuries rather than in one single event. Rupkund Lake lies on the path of a present-day pilgrimage, the Nanda Devi Raj Jat. The proximity of Rupkund Lake to the Nanda Devi Raj Jat pilgrimage route has led researchers to hypothesize that at least some of the ancient human remains of the lake could belong to pilgrims who met an unfortunate end during one of these journeys. The harsh weather conditions and high altitude may have contributed to their deaths, leading to the mysterious accumulation of bones that have puzzled historians and scientists for years. This raises the possibility that some of the Rupkunda A individuals could have died during an ancient pilgrimage event. The second group, labelled Rupkund B, presents a different mystery. Unlike Rupkund A, these individuals appear to have Mediterranean ancestry, likely from around the eastern Mediterranean region. Their diet, which was based more on terrestrial foods rather than seafood, suggests they came from an inland area controlled by the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> Remarkably, this group shows no signs of the genetic patterns typically seen in the people living in South Asia at that time, like the Indo-Greek or Kalish populations. This rules out the possibility that they were descendants of Alexander the Great's soldiers, who are known to have left genetic traces in some nearby populations. Instead, they seem to be an unrelated group of men and women 
who traveled from the eastern Mediterranean to the Himalayas for reasons still unknown. What's puzzling is that Rupkund Lake's remote location is not near any major ancient trade route, nor is it a place where people from the Mediterranean would typically travel. While it's possible they were participating in the Hindu pilgrimage, it's unlikely given that Hindu practices wouldn't be common in the eastern Mediterranean. It's more plausible that this group of travelers had a different reason for journeying to this remote lake. A third individual, labeled Rukhan C, also stands out due to ancestry links to Southeast Asia, adding to the diversity and mystery of the site. Together, these findings highlight how advanced techniques in genetic and isotopic analysis can reveal rich, complex histories even at archaeological sites that have been disturbed or damaged.